Whoever expected that an animated movie about a child's toy could tie together the deepest revelations of Plato, The Matrix, Aristophanes, Gnosticism, Capitalism, and George Orwell, all while teaching us a thing or two about how to live free, more aware lives. I can see everything. Written and directed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, The Lego Movie is a many-layered story with a rich meta-narrative, far from the shallow, glorified promo many expected walking into the theater. Beware, this video will contain spoilers. I am so pumped! Up. Emmett is your average guy, living his life according to instructions and rules. We can all relate to the feeling that our society or workplace binds us to a daily existence full of rules. But here, it's taken to an extreme. Emmett has instruction manuals for how to breathe, shower, commute, and live. Wear clothes! Oop, almost forgot that one. The prevalence of instructions cleverly plays on the instruction books of advanced Lego constructions. But it also makes a point that reflects our own society. Mass obedience to common rules helps the Lego people build sophisticated structures and a well-oiled society. But it also forces conformity. Conformity is so extreme, we realize this is an Orwellian world of total state control. Cameras watch the civilians alongside massive billboards of President Business saying, I've got my eye on you. An allusion to the ubiquitous Big Brother is Watching You poster in 1984's Oceana. The leader's name, President Business, tells us that Lego Movie's dystopia is a corporate capitalist one, an exaggerated version of our own capitalist society. There is no separation between the government and business. Both are ruled by President Business, whose second name is Lord Business. Just as 1984's totalitarian state distracts the proletariat with mindless or sentimental entertainment, President Business dominates the media with Taco Tuesday. The sitcom Honey, Where Are My Pants? Honey, where are my pants? <laughs> And the song, Everything is Awesome. Oh my gosh, I love this song! Everything is awesome. Those who break the rules, such as the master builders, are taken to the think tank. Much like Orwell's Room 101 in 1984, the think tank is a re-education center that tortures and brainwashes to destroy individuals' will and free thought. The think tank transforms the master builders' imaginations into Octane Corp's easy-to-follow instructions, turning rule breakers into bricks in the corporate monolith. Even though Emmett feels close to his fellow citizens, like 1984's comrades, they don't actually know anything meaningful about one another. I know that guy, but I know like zippy zap about him. People People have become unable to communicate or connect in Lord Business's society. Emmett follows the instructions perfectly but still feels lonely and anxious deep down. If we follow our own society's rules unthinkingly, we will feel the same lack of personal satisfaction and fulfillment. Emmett's world of instructions is shattered when he finds the mysterious piece of resistance and meets Wildstyle. I'm gonna have to report you. Emmett meets the master builders, those who build without instructions and are defined by their independence. They actively fight against Lord Business's brainwashing corporate world. They are led by Vitruvius, a send-up of the wise master trope. I am a blind man and cannot see. His name comes from the ancient Roman architect Vitruvius, whose treatise De Architectura was considered the first and most fundamental document on architecture and engineering during the Renaissance. Even Leonardo da Vinci was inspired by Vitruvius in his famous Vitruvian Man. The Vitruvius in the Lego movie likewise understands the deeper purpose and nature of Legos. The prophecy states that you are the special. Which people living under President Business's sway fail to contemplate. On their fundamental level, Legos are blank starting material. Vitruvius has taught the master builders how to use their imaginations and write their own instruction manuals. His mission is to teach free will, to create liberated, free-thinking individuals. But flaws appear in the master builders' world. Cloud Cuckoo Land, the master builders' home, is chaotic and immature. The name Cloud Cuckoo Land is a reference to ancient Greek writer Aristophanes' comedy, The Birds. In the play, a man convinces a flock of birds to create a city in the sky so he can control all communication with the gods. The illusion speaks to an over-optimistic idea of something that's ultimately out of reach. The master builders' characters are as wild and larger than life as their home, but they're also one note and one dimensional. Any idea is a good idea, except not happy ones. They're all trying hard to be different. Batman constantly reminds everyone how cool and dark he is. This is a song I wrote for Wildstyle. 
as if those two qualities constitute an entire personality. Despite their potential to be free individuals, the master builders trap themselves with arbitrary self-imposed new rules. The master builders are slaves to their own tastes. If anybody has black parts, I need them, okay? I only work in black. They are confined by their limited self-images. In order to save Vitruvius, the master builders have to follow instruction manuals to break into Lord Business's fortress. They're so used to breaking the rules, they can't follow instructions to perform a larger act of organized disobedience. This is where Emmett's talent for rule following becomes the key. The strikingly unspecial Emmett becomes the everyman, the stand-in for anybody in the audience. Jokes are played on Emmett's lack of imagination. Introducing the double-decker couch. Emmett's no, tastes no, are also bland. That. He literally likes everything. Oh, that's $37. Awesome! Master builders like Wildstyle and Batman want to ditch Emmett, but can't because the piece of resistance is glued to his body. Unlike heroes who choose to accept greatness or must channel their own deep inner greatness, Emmett is simply there. Later, the idea that he's the special turns out to be a lie made by Vitruvius to inspire hope. I'm not the special. But Emmett's lack of particular qualities is what makes him able to rise to the occasion. Emmett is the only one who can be anything because he's not specifically anything. Unlike anyone else in the instructions world or the master builders world, he can both use his imagination and follow instruction manuals. The piece of resistance, the cap to the crazy glue, is the key that opens up our understanding that there is an entire other level of consciousness unknown to these characters. When we, the audience, see the piece, we recognize it as the cap to Lord Business's craggle, a tube of crazy glue. Both the craggle and the piece of resistance are alien to LEGO World not only in design, but in function as well. They're one of the few objects not made out of LEGO bricks. Their introduction intentionally breaks the fourth wall, both as a joke, Bring me the sword of exact zero. And an allusion to a dimension outside of LEGOs. Emmett's discovery of the piece sets everyone on the path to another dimension of understanding, including us. In the major revelation of the movie, we find out that the events of the story have been caused by a young boy, Finn, playing with his father's Legos. For Finn, Legos are all about imagination and building from instinct. Finn's dad, the man upstairs, reveres the instructions that come with his Lego set. In a busy, stressful adult life, building something perfectly gives him some sense of control and achievement. The man upstairs decides to permanently glue his Legos together to save his work from Finn's destruction. As a stand-in for the man upstairs' playtime with his Legos, ironically, the seemingly all-powerful Lord Business is just as much a slave as the people he controls. He's nothing more than the physical representation of the man upstairs in LEGO World. Cloud Cuckoo Land and the Master Builders, the extension of Finn's playtime, are also limited. They have variety and uninhibited spontaneity, but they lack focus or depth. Space chair right back here. Thus, the conflict between President Business's world and the Master Builders becomes an ideological battle between kid and adult. Is the purpose of play to be purely original and have fun in the moment? Or to create a larger outcome with lasting impact, even if the building is less fun or exciting at the time? Is it about the process? I was just playing. Or the result? And everything is thought out. Meanwhile, the meta-narrative makes all of the LEGO characters part of someone's imagination, without agency or free will. The story has a strong connection to a concept in Gnosticism called the Demiurge. What is Gnosticism? It's a philosophy of thoughts and religions that are rooted in Kabbalah, Neoplatonism, and Proto-Christian thought that mainly existed in the second century. The Gnostic Demiurge is a corrupt god-like entity, like a middleman god. The Demiurge created the material world we all inhabit, but that material world clouds the real spiritual one humans should strive for. Think of it like Plato's Allegory of the Cave. A bunch of people are chained inside a cave where they watch shadows on the walls, believing that is the whole world. Or, to use a more recent example, consider the Matrix. Both Emmett and Neo must break out of their limited worlds to understand a greater reality. Both eventually become the chosen one to help others escape the veil of their limited understanding. After meeting a wild girl and a wise prophet, and hearing a disproven prophecy that helps them discover their own inner potential. I'm not the one. Finn and the man upstairs are the Demiurges, or the Matrix's machines to the LEGO world. After Emmett's heroic sacrifice, he becomes stuck on the floor of the basement his LEGO world inhabits. 
Emmett has escaped the cave. Like Neo, Emmett is able to step outside the rules of physics and physically will himself to move so Finn can see what he's holding, the piece of resistance, the cap of the crazy glue. This small act, made entirely by Emmett's free will, his denial of the rules of what's possible or impossible, inspires Finn to build again. Forces beyond comprehension are acting upon LEGO World, but its citizens find the will to fight as creative individuals unified in purpose. What I see are people inspired by each other. People taking what you made and making something new out of it. In the end, Lord Business's monolithic business gives way to a balance of individualism and collective purpose. Importantly, Emmett doesn't get rid of instructions. They allow people to build great things with clarity. The master builders let go of their ham-fisted attempts to be self-consciously unique at the expense of true freedom and individuality. Lucy. What? That was my real name. As for the LEGO citizens, they learn to incorporate both instructions and spontaneity into their lives. And in the meta-narrative, both child and parent have learned parallel lessons in order to play in peace together. Our own freedom faces challenges from all directions. External systems like capitalist culture and totalitarian governments, existential questions of false realities, disagreements with our parents or kids, and self-imposed internal pressure to be who we're not. Against all these pressures, we can channel our inner special to expand our consciousness and live the most authentic, free existence we can imagine. We are from the planet Duplon, and we are here to destroy you. Oh, man.